Young Men Emerging Program's progressive, forward-thinking unit made up of community members, mentors, and mentees. The residents within this unit need your support to truly involve and shy away from past behaviors. Well, I'm anxious to see, man. And welcome to our yeah, Thank you for having me. Absolutely. This is the Young Men Emerging Unit in the D.C. Jail. It's not what most people picture when they think of a jail. The unit's filled with books, murals, photos, and vision boards. You know, I, I think about prosperity. The way you can frame the way you think the vision board is very important. It's also home to one of Washington, D.C.'s newest public servants. Well, my name is Joel Cashstone, currently now the ANC commissioner of this single member district in D.C. Historical election, the first time anyone incarcerated won a seat while they are incarcerated. Last year, D.C. became the first jurisdiction in the U.S. to restore voting rights to incarcerated people. That's also when city council members and people living near the jail complex started to organize a special election. I discovered that not only could we vote, but we can also run for public office. And so I was like, okay, <laughs> thought about it. <laughs> Went to my room, did my little meditation, yoga, and things of that nature. And I said, you know what? Let me cast my name in the ballot. And I did it. My platform will be used to restore the dignity of incarcerated people. With the help of correctional officers, Castone and four other residents recorded campaign ads that were posted to YouTube. I come before you today asking for your support. What kind of problems did you all run into trying to get people to vote inside of a prison? Yeah, awareness was number one. You know, being aware of the fact that we could. You know, I think it may be a misnomer. Many don't know that incarcerated individuals are heavily invested in what happens in the news. Quite naturally, there were some individuals who thought like, ah, why vote? My vote doesn't matter. Castone grew up in Southeast D.C., not far from the jail. At 18, he was convicted of a crime for which he served nearly 27 years. Did you think it was a pipe dream, or and you like, let me just try and see? I didn't even think about winning. I'm always talking about civic engagement and what it looks like to participate in the democratic process. I just yeah. wanted to spark a night inside of the hearts and minds of particularly the people on the inside that we need to start thinking like citizens now. I, Joel Castone, will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll do it and <laughs> DC was redistricted in 2012, creating an advisory neighborhood commission seat to represent the part of the city that includes the jail. The seat stayed vacant until Castone won in June. For the position that you hold, who, who is it that you represent? It's the individuals who are currently incarcerated in both facilities here, commonly known as DC Jail is one, one box, as well as the women inside the Harriet Tubman Women's Shelter, as well as the individuals who live inside of the Park Kennedy apartment complex. Bruh, these are luxury apartments. I looked them up, 700 square feet. $2,000 a month. Mm -hmm. How do you negotiate leading a diverse group like this? With a dichotomy, you have um, poverty and prosperity living in close proximity. I think that's a small image of America as a whole. Advisory neighborhood commissioners serve unpaid on a two-year term. They meet at least 10 times a year and advise the city council on things like public safety, sanitation, housing, and education, as well as policy and legislation. D.C. has 296 single member districts, and they have 40 ANC commissioners. I have the authority to write resolutions and to address DC government and DC council directly, as well as federal agencies according to their rules. And so we're talking about solving the ills of our community, but we need people that come from the community to help you solve the ills. This is actually um, the survey I put together for my constituents you know, so I can generate feedback on, on what's important to them. And this is your constituency within, within, the, within, the, within jail. the facility. Within the facility, exactly, okay. within the facility. But you also got to reach out to the I constituency got, uh, outside speak, of the facility. Yeah, right. exactly. And I've worked through a lot of my liaisons that's out there allowing mm -hmm. me to do that there. Castone's staff is helping run his office remotely. They're all current or former Georgetown University students studying the consequences of mass incarceration. Abigail Glasgow manages the team. Now I oversee five interns um, who run various channels for him. So we've got media, relations, 
ANC-related relations, which are issues he's talking about, how to get involved with the community, events he's attending, um, ways where, particularly when he can't be physically present, we can liaise some sort of support. Financial literacy and partnerships uh, and social media. Okay, so today I have a meeting. So we also have a template, like an Excel spreadsheet, actually, I should say, where we log who's coming in, what are they asking, and then those are things that interns will go through with Joel. So much of the team's job is getting his name out there so that folks know he exists for that reason. Um, but I also think that a lot of that interaction is gonna depend on him being able to physically be outside and be able to go door to door, you know, and really engage. And I know he's really looking forward to that. Until Castone is able to do that, is down to people like Eric Weaver to educate formerly incarcerated folks on the power that can come from civic engagement. This is one of the programs we just started. With us. This is mostly reentry, so it's like helping people get jobs. And After spending 22 years locked up, Weaver now runs an organization that helps people get job training, government IDs, and housing when they're released. He's also trying to organize them as a voting bloc. What does it do for an incarcerated individual to exercise that right? to vote. It humanizes you to the point that you feel like a citizen again. I think we have come a long way from being uh, convicted felons, convicts, and, and things like that, to now um, being called return citizens. It's going to change how we get treated because people will need these votes to win. It kind of makes sense that someone who has been incarcerated be in public office because you pretty much touched every level of, of government. I think they have a, a, a true understanding of the, of the landscape of their city, as you said, by going through all those other things. And you're able to identify some of the things down at that level that really need to be fixed. And some of those things you can't understand unless you've been through it. I think as we continue to educate, organize, and mobilize return citizens, the sky's the limit. While Caston is learning the ins and outs of his new role, He's still a mentor with the Young Men Emerging Unit. He's worked with more than 200 men between the ages of 18 and 25 since the program started three years ago. Lieutenant Temeskin and DeMichael oversees YME. starting in two minutes. I've been in corrections for 11 years. So basically, the mindset that I had was uh, just lock them in and throw the key. So that's what you had initially when you came Correct. into this. But I came to understand there are people who went through so much trauma and there is a room for redemption and transformation. But it takes work. You are in corrections. So security is paramount. While you're doing that, you can still treat people as people. And you can support them, encourage them, at the same time, hold them accountable. I think that character is the most important thing we're working on. We know we come in, bad attitudes. I try to exemplify a very diplomatic disposition at all times. And if I do fall myself being agitated or aggravated like any other human being, I have my outlets. This is what exercise is for. This is what prayer is for. This is what yoga is for. This is what meditation is for. This is what other good men and women are for, that you can talk to them and be able to get things off your chest. Good morning, my name is Amari Brooks. I'm checking in at the 10. Good morning, Kayvon Brown, checking in at 10. Good morning, Keyshawn Taylor, checking in at 2.8 trillion. As you can see on the scale of one to 10, we rate our feelings, right? We believe in mind over matter. Gaston sees himself in these men, and he's helped build a program that could have helped him when he was a teenager. And today's topic, we're now gonna go on to the current Catholic session. The men circle up every morning, they read together, take courses, and do homework. They identify their passions and potential career paths. Outside counselors like Corey Knight come through the unit weekly to facilitate that process. I took my old behaviors and lifestyles and I crafted them into my new life and just became who I wanted to be. Create the life you want so you can stop living the one you hate. What do you think folks outside of here get wrong about y'all? Once they hear that word inmate, which we don't use in this community, we use resident. But like, when they hear the word inmate, they just think like violence or you, you're a criminal. If they get a chance to know us, know the real us, we'd be like regular people with just different circumstances. You know, they didn't have certain opportunities that others might have. 
they see us as like a percentage, a statistic, like a number. Like every time one of us get locked up, like they add that to the list of people that's massively incarcerated. You never know what a person is going through or transitioning through to get where they are. A lot of us are students from Georgetown University, right? And uh, during one of the courses of studying psychology, I read that an abnormal response to an abnormal situation is normal behavior. Gun violence is just simply a symptom of a underlying, a, a deeper sickness. So when they see these kids act out, don't just question, you know, don't look at what he did. Why is he doing it? It seemed like y'all strong in here, like proud community and it, very supportive. Is there any concern that this doesn't exist outside the way that it does here? I'm planning on taking this home with me to the streets. You know, if I, you know, we already have some of, uh, some of the mentors that left here who are already trying to help curve the gun violence. If this was on the street, given to the kids before they reach that certain age where they got their mind made up, I mean, I think it, it will it'd be, it'd be very vital. Don't let nothing rally y'all cages. You valuable, man. And you can't let nobody take that from you, man. You may not get no money orders, you may not get no business, no letters, none of that stuff, man. You gotta try to find another way to survive that, man. Remember, it haven't been 27 years waiting to go home. It's been 27 years what? Preparing myself to what? To never come back to prison, man. If I can encourage other men and women who are currently incarcerated start to say that this doesn't define me. I'm greater than my present circumstances. If they begin to exude that type of confidence, then others receive them as such. How long did it take you to read this? I don't even know. I did it during the pandemic. I read both of them. Castone is studying to be a commodity trading advisor and plans to launch an investment counseling business called Currency Catchers. Ordinarily, I would say, you ain't read all this, but he literally had underlined and highlights <laughs> to the very last page, unless you got it used. <laughs> nah, I, mean, <laughs> I did not want to continue living life as a drug dealer, a hustler. I want every incarcerated person to have a bank account and a brokerage account so they can have saving and investing. If everyone is thinking that way financially, and you going home and you have a financial stability behind you, then that lessens the pain or that reduces the rate of recidivism. If one of the reasons you got locked up in the first place is because you was out in the streets hustling, and then once you come out, you ain't got no money, then it just makes it that much easier for you to go back to hustling. And you got it. It's all an economic issue. I gotta get a picture of mother and son together. <laughs> Castone made parole earlier this year, so he's preparing for life outside jail, not just as an elected official, but as a small business owner. He recently finished an entrepreneurship program offered by the D.C. government, specifically for returning citizens, and he was granted a day-long furlough to participate in a pitch contest. We are going to start off with a very special guest today. He is the first elected representative to represent incarcerated people in the district. And I am so happy that you're here with us, Joel. But I am going to give the stage to you. Our economizing plan is for individuals seeking financial services to build wealth through stock ownership and to generate revenue through option, future forex, and cryptocurrency investing. My incarceration experience was not a vacation. It was a dissertation. Give me 12 months, I'm gonna create currency cash throughout the nation. Join the movement. Thank you, everyone. He was awarded a $5,700 grant to get currency catchers off the ground. My name is Michael Woody. Me and Mr. Castone have been knowing each other for, for quite some time, well over almost 30 years. Unfortunately, he had an opportunity to be around each other in multiple facilities. I'm the, the first uh, individual to be released under the IRA 3.0. It stands for Incarceration Reduction Amendment Act. It's the third version of a law or bill that was introduced by DC Council, which allows guys who have been sentenced to long prison sentence and who have now shown that they have rehabilitated. Uh, it affords them an opportunity to have a reduction of sentence 
with the potential of being released. So I'm, I'm fortunate and I'm grateful for that. I hope Joel is released uh, soon, you know, so we can rebuild our relationship and continue to do some of the things that, that we discuss. And he has a bright future. I support him. We're finally giving people inside a voice as they deserve, giving them agency, validating their humanity, I think could really turn around the criminal legal system as a whole. Um, and at the end of the day, just show people inside that someone is listening because people have not been, and people still aren't, but they will. I don't see it going too long before we actually have a returned citizen that actually, you know, was grew up in D.C., committed uh, crimes, and is now a council member or something outside.